Hello everybody, this is Tekka. In this video, what I'm going to be doing is giving you my first look or first impressions of an Arch-based Linux distribution called Zero Linux. Uh, this one was heavily requested in the Discord server. If you'd like to join, chit chat, request things like this, you go ahead and join our Discord server. Link is down below. But with that said, this is the release page for the September 2021 main release of Zero Linux. Uh, if you go through here, it gives you a lot of good information on the Linux distribution. I'll go ahead and link this down below. But here we have some of these system requirements. It requires at least something around the range of an Intel Core i3, three gigabytes of RAM and integrated graphics. And it's looking like it's asking for at least 20 gigabytes of hard drive or SSD storage. They have some recommended things. If you're somebody who's on a hybrid graphics on like a laptop, for example, you're gonna to want to go over to their common issue page and read more on that. But I already kind of skimmed through most of these release notes here. So I'm gonna be talking about things as we go through it and some of the uh, specific features to this Linux distribution. So what I'm gonna do now is actually plug in my USB to a physical computer and record this off of a capture card so you can see the performance and all that on actual physical hardware. Last time I did this, we were in uh, Ubuntu. So let's go ahead and uh, reboot our computer here. There we go. Let's give some priority to our uh, freshly created USB drive of Zero Linux. And then let's save and reset. All right, so we have our boot screen. Let's go ahead and jump into the install medium. All right, it is loading up here and we're about in. And so far the first impressions that I'm getting, it's the actual desktop is absolutely beautiful. I love this uh, kind of floating taskbar up here. The application menu is nice. This is obviously a KDE. We have some of the system monitor stuff already built in. The icons are awesome. And I do like that they're using this icon pack versus the uh, candy icons that I saw in some of the screenshots. I am not a fan of those uh, neon looking icons. Ignoring this for now, let's go ahead and just install it. So let's install Zero Linux and wait for this to open up. And if I do so recall, this is Calamaris and we can see some of the uh, wobbly window effects here right out of the gate that's pretty cool uh, so let's jump through here and obviously if you don't like things like me i'm not too much a fan of, the, of this cursor you could change all this in your system settings no problem uh, so let's run through this real quick and it looks like they're going to give us a lot of different options within the actual installer and i do like that when it allows you to select all your different packages and things like that so american english is good for me let's go next and here we go so this is the core stuff uh, we have the stock Arch kernel, Linux and Linux headers. I'm probably just gonna stick with this one. Right here we have it selecting our CPU's microcode. I'm on an Intel at the moment. Here we can select our light DM login. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select all the packages for that. Down here we have Optimus Manager for that uh, NVIDIA Intel GPU switching. You have a ton of different kernels here. So you have the AMD Ryzen specific kernel, Zen patched, stable LTS, bunch of different things. Then we have some of our NVIDIA drivers here. If you have a NVIDIA card, you could select those through here. Additionally, we have some of our uh, Intel GPU drivers, NVIDIA tools, AMD GPU drivers, which is nice. And right here we have audio drivers and it has some notes here and it says you must select one or else you'll have no audio. And this is actually kind of cool because from here it gives you the option within the actual installer to either go with Pipewire or Pulse Audio. Now this is really nice because it's, a lot of distros don't give you this option. So I'm just gonna go with Pulse Audio. And I think that's all I'm gonna need for now. And obviously you could get any of this stuff after the fact, just through the Arch repositories. So from here, let's go next. And now we have a bunch of different things. We have some Android iOS tools, uh, audio music tools. So if I open that up, go through audio editors, for example, and we can see things like Ardor, Audacity. So that's cool. Just to test this out, we'll go ahead and throw Audacity on there. Uh, we have some benchmarking tools, so that's pretty cool. We have the uh, this test suite right here, which is what I use for a lot of my benchmarking videos. If you're interested in checking those out, you gotta hit the little I to get to a playlist. Uh, I'm not gonna do any of that for now. We have Dev Studio, uh, disk and USB tools. So here we have like Gparted, Etcher, uh, we have game launchers, so you can select uh, to install Steam, Proton, Play on Linux, Minecraft, Lutris. Basically anything that you would need, you could go through here and customize all your packages. Uh, we have Graphics Studio, Internet, under the browsers, for example, they have a huge list that you could go ahead and choose from. Libre Wolf is in here. So just for testing stake, let's go ahead and include that. 
Uh, you have download managers, social clients, LibreOffice. I'm not going to do that. Password managers and Bitwarden is in here, so that's good. Uh, themes and tools. This is one thing. There's a lot of different themes that you could go ahead and install. Uh, the Nordic theme is in here, and I really do appreciate that. That is one of my favorite themes. At the moment, I'm not going to select any of these just because I want to see uh, it at its default. The fact I'm I'm kind of just picking some of these just to make sure everything works properly. Uh, you have video tools here. So if I go under video players, let's go ahead and select. Oh, it doesn't look like it has MPV. To the developer, I'd recommend uh, adding MPV in here. That's one of my favorites. Uh, video editors, there's a good amount to choose from. You have conversion tools, virtualization, so you can get VirtualBox and VMware. Then they have the wine all in one. Uh, I'm not going to select too much of these, just that uh, web browser and Audacity that I selected. From there, let's go next. And here, this is going to be pretty familiar. I'm just going to select our location, our keyboard. From here, I'm just going to erase the entire disk. And you can see by default, it's going to go ahead and use BetterFS. And honestly, I'd recommend you use BetterFS. A lot of work went into making BetterFS work really well with Calamaris. And it includes Snapper, which is a wonderful restoring utility, and their graphic user utility for actually using Snapper is really nice. We're going to be getting into that in a sec. For now, since I'm on actual hardware, I'm actually going to do swap to file here. And then you have the option to encrypt your system if you'd like to. I'm not going to. Let's go next. I'm going to fill this out real quick. All right, so I got it all filled out. My computer name is going to be Zero Linux. Uh, let's do the same password for the administrator account. Hit next. Here it's going to give us a rundown of everything that we're going to be doing. And then let's go ahead and click install. And while it installs, we'll get this little message here that will say sit back, grab some coffee while your system installs. And depending on your actual internet connection speed, that could indicate how long this is going to take. Also, obviously, depending on how many packages you actually installed in this packages section over here. All right, it is done. Took about 10 minutes or so, not too bad. I don't think I mentioned the ISO download was about 2.3 gigabytes. Sorry if I already did mention, but we're gonna go ahead and restart our system. You saw there were two options there to close the installer as well as restarting our system. Now I need to hurry up and unplug this so that way it doesn't boot into it. Ooh, look at that. We got a fancy boot menu here. Uh, it automatically did it. Uh, that was nice, I've never seen that before. And here we go, here's our light DM. Let's go ahead, type in my password, log in, and check out the defaults. Um, I'm assuming it's gonna be exactly as it was with the live ISO, which is my preference, and here is everything. So first thing we're gonna notice here is this uh, zero Linux configuration tool. So right here, you can fix the Pac-Man keys, check for updates, change the virtual machine resolution if you happen to be in there. And then we have some additional tools such as the Zero Linux File System tool. We're gonna to take a look at that in just a minute. And we have a QUMU tools as well as the Samba tools, which honestly, I'm not sure what those are. And then we have the AutoStar and GPU probe. Let's actually go ahead and just launch the uh, file system tool now. So let's launch the selector. And here we can see what file system we're using. So we're using BetterFS, or some people say ButterFS. And we can configure Snapper, configure Time Shift with BetterFS or Exit. Now, one thing I'd recommend is using Snapper because their tool is awesome. I'm gonna type in my password here. It's gonna run an update, grab some packages real quick. Oh, it looks like it rebooted our system. So now we're back in. So this time, if I go ahead and launch the selector, it's going to allow us to run the uh, Zero Linux rollback tool through here. And this is really nice. This is using Snapper with BetterFS. One thing that's important to note is you can't really use time shift in this at the same time. So when you run that initial selector, you're gonna to want to make sure you pick the one that you're going to want to use. So you can see here, we have one backup thus far on the fresh install. And this is cool because I can actually roll back without having to boot into a live ISO if I didn't like screw up my system too bad and I'm actually get it, able to get into it, you could actually use the rollback GUI here to do that. This right here is magnificent. So for now, let's go ahead and exit out of here. Just to test it, let's uh, probe our GPU real quick and see what it says. So you can see it did, we're using a Intel uh, integrated graphics 6000 series and this is the uh, drivers are running. There were no NVIDIA drivers present. So that's a nice little utility. So that said, let's get into the actual uh, application set we have here, disincluding the things that we checked to install during the actual installation process. 
So under development, we have a bunch of QT stuff, icon browser, stuff you'd expect with the KDE system, color chooser, Gwyn view. Here we have a validity from default, so that seems to be the default web browser. And it seems like val validity is becoming more and more popular within the uh, Linux community, as uh, we mentioned a couple weeks ago, Manjaro Cinnamon Edition is going to be shipping with Valvality. So now, as far as I know, it's this, uh, this Linux distribution, Manjaro Cinnamon and Farron all ship with Valvality. But we have uh, LibreWolf that we went ahead and actually installed through the actual Calamaris installer. So that's cool. If I go back over here, we have some lost and found stuff, including the Snapper GUI tool. If I open that up, what we can do through here is actually create new snapshots and manipulate our snapper snapshots through here if we would like to. Under multimedia, you can see we have Audacity, which we installed. We have those Pulse Audio things, Office, not much. We have a bunch of different settings, including our Grub Customizer, Light DM Greeter settings, Kavanta Manager, just file stuff, uh, Add Remove Software, which if I do so know correctly, this is going to be Pamac. So this is Pamac installed out of the gate. That is very nice. Probably one of my favorite software management tools on Arch Linux. If we go under preferences, type in our password, we can see if there are some settings already configured for us, specifically looking into third party. So that's kind of nice. They don't automatically enable AUR, Flatpak, or Snap packages. So you're going to have to go through and enable whatever you want yourself, just like that. And under general, depending on your internet speed, one thing you might want to do is bump that up to 10. Go ahead and close that out. And when I ran that rollback selector utility, it did run a system update. So all this should be up to date. We'll give it a check here and our system is up to date. So you can close that out. So it has PAMAC. That's nice. Real quick, let's go ahead and open up the console and that's a nice looking console here, very uh, customized and configured uh, NeoFetch. We have our separate hardware information as well as our software information here. We are running ZSH and we have about 1200 packages installed with uh, no software containers at all. So that is nice. You could see our local IP, our integrated graphics. It's kind of hard to see with the background and that's super easy to change. One thing I just noticed with this console opened up the actual global menu up here is integrated very well. So if I go over to settings, for example, let's go ahead and I think it's under configure console. And this is how we could go ahead and switch the look around. So if I go to edit this, go over to appearance, edit this, we can change the background transparency to zero. Okay. 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 Now we could see this a little bit better here. You can see when I opened this up, it was using just about a gigabyte of memory. And that is kind of a lot for KDE Plasma, but with all the effects and the transparencies and everything going on, all the integrated things within the taskbar, one gigabyte actually is not too bad. With this open right here, let's go ahead and just run an LS. I always like to see what the default is and there is customization there. So it's um, colorful. It's gonna show us all the information when I hit LS. And let's run HTOP. This is probably included. It's not, maybe some BTOP, maybe some BPY top. Nope, so we're gonna want to go ahead and grab our own terminal system monitor. I wonder if yay is enabled. Yay is not, so we're gonna be using PAMAC to do this. And I did enable AUR, so we should be able to get BTOP through here. Beautiful, there it is. So let's go ahead and select yes, type in our password. There we go, BTOP is now installed. So if I run that, we can actually see exactly what's going on in our system. Uh, we have CPU performance hovering right around 2 to 4%. Our memory utilization is a little bit higher now that I'm running some software. We are using 1.2 to 1.3 gigabytes of RAM. And you can see all the different processes running. A lot of things to do with Plasma, which is to be expected. We have some Pulse Audio stuff. Looks like we have GNOME keyring. But overall, it's looking good. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Close the window. And now let's go ahead and check out some of the UI customizations we have. First, let's see what Dolphin looks like. Uh, pretty standard, themed very well, looks good. It's very flat, so there's not really any line separators between the different sections or anything like that. And again, up here, the fact they got Global Menu to work so well with all this is awesome. Let's go ahead and open up a uh, non-QT application. I just wanna see if it pulls it, so 
Audacity. Let's see if that's integrated in that global menu. And it's not, that's to be expected, honestly. But if you are running Qt applications, that should work. Let's go down here real quick and check out some of the other things on this stock. We have Vivaldi, we have the Cavanta Manager, Console, System Settings, Disks, and I, is this GNOME Disk Utility? Yeah, it is. So threw in some GNOME stuff, and honestly, this is what I would do. Uh, I prefer GNOME Disk Utility over KDE Partition Manager, Grub Customizer, PAMAC, and an additional Thunder, not Thunder, an additional file manager. We have Thunar here on the uh, dock down there, so you could remove whatever one you didn't want to use. And right here, we have the present window button. If I go ahead and tap on that, then I can manipulate open windows. So if I opened up a couple more things and then tapped on this, I can see all my open windows, either select them or go ahead and close them out through here. Now, if I go up here, being that this is KDE, you can edit just about anything. If I go edit doc, ooh, this is Lati doc. So it's not using the integrated uh, KDE stuff. It's using Lati doc, very customizable, wonderful utility. I haven't played around with it enough to pretend like I know what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that out for now and leave it at those defaults. And the last thing I think we're gonna do here is open up our system settings and check out some of this, uh, some of the default theming. So if I go under appearance here, we're using LAN, which is a very nice theme. Uh, application style, we're doing this through Cavantum. If I go down to plasma style, LAN, colors, we are on the same thing. LAN again, I wonder what the icon pack is. Because like I said, I'm happy that they're using, yep, this is a wonderful icon pack, much better than the uh, candy icons that uh, they were using in their uh, previous versions, in my opinion. Cursors. Uh, let's go ahead and change this. I'd honestly rather have just this default stock cursor, personally, but that's just me. Actually, this one's pretty nice. Let's apply that. There we go. And we have some font management as well as the splash screen settings. Currently, there's none, but that is okay. So that was my first look, initial impressions of Zero Linux. Honestly, based on what I see, it performs very well for all the different kind of features and everything. It, you, if you don't like things like this, uh, the wiggly windows and all that, all that could be disabled through the KDE Plasma settings with no issue. But even with things like that, it performs very well. Honestly, when it comes to Linux distributions and like at least all the Arch-based Linux distributions that I'm aware of, this is probably one of the more beautiful ones. I mean, this is kind of how I would set it up for myself if I was to actually play around with it enough and learn Lottie Doc and all that. This is honestly something I wouldn't even need to really change around too much. I would switch out icons here, remove and add some applications, but that's really about it. If we go over to our wallpapers, Zero Linux is just this one, and other than that, it looks like just some uh, standard KDE Plasma default wallpapers. And the Zero Linux default wallpaper is absolutely beautiful. I love these uh, cartoonish or animated landscape wallpapers. So I could keep rambling on forever. This is a beautiful Linux distribution. I would highly recommend you check it out and check out that uh, release announcement that I'm gonna go ahead and link down below because I briefly skimmed over some really cool things such as their uh, rollback utility uh, their file system tool selector and all that. There are some really good stuff in this. So with all that said, links will be in the description. I would like to thank our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. We have Mitchell Valentino, Phil Matt, Kyle, and Timo Anthony. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel. And thank you to all the other Techie and Techie Plus members. If you are interested in supporting the channel, you go ahead and click the link down below to go to Patreon or simply hit the join button right below this video. If not a simple subscribe, like all that jazz is more than good enough for me. Um, yeah, down the links below. I hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.